most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnall Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnall, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope. Mr. Donald I. Rogers of the New York Herald Tribune and Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Owen Brewster, United States Senator from Maine. The opinions expressed are necessarily those of the speakers. Senator Brewster, our audience, of course, knows you as the distinguished Senate, senior senator from Maine. How long have you been in the Senate, sir? This is my 11th year. And what are your committee assignments now, sir? I'm on foreign relations and interstate and foreign commerce. And I believe that our audience uh, understands that you are one of the three senators who has just uh, rejected the nomination of uh, Dr. Jessup. Uh, that's correct, isn't it, sir? Yes, there was a subcommittee of five members, and uh, we've held hearings for three weeks, and three of us voted against his confirmation. Senator Smith, and Senator Gillette, on the ground that he lacked popular confidence. I voted against him on the ground he couldn't make himself understood, and I thought that was the first qualification of a diplomat. Uh, Senator, <coughs> I believe that uh, Mr. Jessup's uh, uh, background came into uh, the discussion. His yes. ties or, or that beliefs was, with Red China? Yes, that was the basis of the original attack upon him and on the policies that he had advocated. Uh, President Stassen of the University of Pennsylvania yes. made some very serious charges and substantiated them pretty well with some of his evidence. Now, do you feel uh, that this might set a dangerous precedent uh, uh, in which uh, the past utterances or past beliefs of Every nominee would be scrutinized, brought forth to Im impugn him today? Uh, my basis of criticism was his lack of candor in admitting the opinions he had held, his attempt to cover up op opinions which he obviously had held. We had four men, Senator Smith and uh, Mr. Stassen, General Fortier, and today Admiral Cook all testified. They understood from Jessup that he uh, rather inclined to the recognition of Red China. He absolutely denies it. It doesn't seem all those men could be wrong or else he doesn't have the capacity to make himself understood. And that's unfortunate in the you'd, diplomat. You'd feel differently about him if he had uh, said, well, yes, I, I did feel that way about Russia. I think he would have made a much better show. And we had Tobias down there, one of the delegates, and he was connected with various communist organizations. He admitted it frankly, said he didn't realize it at the time. Mm -hmm. He was sorry for it. He's very much opposed. And we unanimously confirmed him today, along with eight other delegates, yes. uh, and left uh, Jessup out. The Senate acted today for, to my very great gratification. I was glad they took Mrs. Roosevelt and Warren Austin out of the class of those whom the Senator refused to confirm. Senator, I suppose that uh, you are quite popular with uh, your colleague, Senator McCarthy, now as a result of this action. Do you regard uh, your vote as a vindication of what is commonly known as McCarthyism? No, I think the McCarthy charges did not occupy as prominent a place in this situation as the friends of Mr. Jessup would have desired. They started out to make McCarthy the issue rather than Jessup. But as a result of the entry of Harold Stassen, the issue became Jessup and his actions. This does, to a measurable extent, vindicate uh, McCarthy's original charge a year ago that he felt that Jessup was the architect of our Far Eastern policy. That uh, Senator Smith himself agreed was one of the fundamental issues. That was the original McCarthy charge. Now, Senator, on that issue, 
Uh, I believe that uh, you are a well-known supporter of Senator Taft's candidacy for the presidency. Yes, I have long believed that he was the logical nominee. You've known the senator for many years, I believe. Yes, I voted for him for president of the Harvard Law Review 30 years ago. Do you think that Senator Taft, uh, number one, can win the Republican nomination? I believe that he has the most excellent chance. I think he's a long ways toward it today from what I've observed in the country. And do you think that as the Republican nominee, he will have a good chance to defeat President yes. Truman? I think he'll make the kind of a campaign which I believe the Republicans and many Americans want, a, a fighting campaign. That's the kind of a man he is, and he has a tremendous uh, knowledge of events. That's one of his unique qualifications because he has an encyclopedic mind and has it all at his fingertips. And what do you think, sir, will be the principal issue in the presidential campaign? I think that confusion, corruption, and communism are altogether likely to be the major issues in the campaign. And I think we have a great deal of ammunition on all those scores. Uh, confusion, corruption, and communism. That, uh, you, you expect that to be one of the Republican slogans, I, I It's my slogan at any rate for the campaign. <laughs> CCC. That's right. Well, Alphabetical uh, agencies are frequent. Uh, you were one of the uh, many who went over to see General Eisenhower this past summer. Yes, yes I was over. Uh, and I assume that after visiting General Eisenhower, you compared uh, General Eisenhower and Mr. Taft and came up with Mr. Taft. Uh, no, I wouldn't say that that was the case. I came back fully persuaded, as I stated, that General Eisenhower was the indispensable man in Europe. And I was very much gratified, although you might not agree, uh, to find the New York Times agreed with me the other day when their correspondent over in Europe uh, had a two-column story to the same effect. Of course, that was very objective. Politicians are sometimes suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Senator, <coughs> I'm sure that our audience would like you to discuss Spain because you've been active in trying to obtain more American aid for Spain. I believe you also uh, travel there, yes. didn't you? I've been over there several times and feel very strongly about the wisdom of our cultivating far more closer relations with them. Now, what is the basis of that, sir? I mean, are you interested in uh, cultivating them for military reasons? Yes, that is the cornerstone. I think all of our defense authorities, that's one thing on we have, which we have complete unification. The Army, because of the uh, ground that is offered, the Air Corps, because of the splendid conditions, you can operate all, all the year and they have very good airfields, and the Navy, because of the ports and because it's the key to the Mediterranean. How we can ever expect to have a great fleet over there in the Mediterranean as we do now without uh, assured sympathetic cooperation from Spain is incalculable. How then do we have all this opposition? Opposition from the White House? I think it is emotional and uh, ideological. The French and the British governments now in power have uh, been uh, very critical of the Franco regime and there are many elements in this country who agree. If the British election should go to Mr. Churchill, there would be quite a change in the British attitude. Uh -huh. Churchill, who was all through the war, knows thoroughly that Spanish picture. And uh, I've discussed it with him this summer, and I know that he fully agrees with those in this country who consider Spain as the cornerstone to quite European defense. Quite parenthetically, not to leave Spain, uh, do you think Churchill has a pretty good chance? Well, that was the feeling when I was there, and apparently every dis development since has indicated it. The betting odds are very much in his favor, as they were in favor of Mr. Dewey a couple of years ago. <laughs> well, <laughs> Senator, I'd like to come back just a moment to the military aspects of Spain. Uh, do our military authorities believe that uh, we could hold Spain in the event of a war with Russia? The Pyrenees are the best natural barrier in the world, probably. If you've flown over, you'll see it running from the Mediterranean to the Atlantic. And uh, almost impenetrable barrier. So that it would be very feasible, and Spain has from one to two million men who are good fighters. Whatever you think about the Spaniards, they're certainly fighters, as they demonstrated in their own civil war. They've had a lot of practice. That's right. Yeah. And uh, the opposition, we were speaking of the opposition in our country to our aid to Spain, and you said that it was emotional. Has the religious issue also been important there? Well, that was what I referred to. I thought it's better to call it emotion rather than a religious fanaticism. 
but uh, that has been very greatly played up and agitated, and I think uh, it has been an influence operating very powerfully in our State Department as manifest in a variety of ways. Now, they finally announced a year ago, January, they were going to normalize relations. Then this year, Admiral Sherman finally persuaded them uh, that we must cultivate closer military arrangements. And he was over there, I was there at the same time when his tragic death came. Well, why is it that we haven't heard anything more about it since Admiral Sherman's death? Because the State Department is now doing exactly what they did on China and exactly what they've done in some other quarters. They are carrying on a slowdown on that situation and are planning to sabotage the program if they can. And I think it is a tragic blow at the adequate preparations of our defense. Will they sabotage the money you've appropriated, this hundred We appropriated a year ago $62 million, and it took them nearly a year to distribute it. Meanwhile, they gave $50 million to Yugoslavia before they even had any authorization. That made the difference. The Yugoslavia has a communist regime, while Spain has a Catholic ideology. And uh, that is apparently not acceptable to those in control in our State Department, and I think it's time the American people understood it. Then I understand you, Senator, that you believe that uh, American dollars spent abroad can be spent very effectively in Spain. I want to thank you very much for being with us tonight, sir. The editorial board for this edition of the Longine Chronoscope was Mr. Donald I. Rogers and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Owen Brewster, United States Senator from Maine. I went to the Museum of the City of New York and I asked, have you got a picture of the New York of 1866? The reason, of course, was that in 1866 in New York, the Longines Whitnor Watch Company opened its doors for business. They gave me this interesting picture. There were sailing ships on the Hudson and the East Rivers, but there were no bridges or subways, no tunnels. Yet two million people already made their homes on Manhattan Island. This was the scene when our company's travelers, by horse car, steam train, and on horseback, first brought Longines watches to fine jewelers throughout the land. What's past is prelude it has been written. This was the prelude to 85 years of leadership in the art of fine watchmaking, a leadership symbolized by 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medal awards, and highest honors for accuracy from the world's government observatories. For beauty, for greater accuracy, and for the promise of a long and useful life, these are the finest Longines watches ever made. Longines, the world's most honored watch, the premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight, again reminding you that the Longines Chronoscope is brought to you three times weekly, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So won't you join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display the emblem Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.